Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to process a soft focus image in Lightroom. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what we're going to do. This is the original image out of the camera, and this is what we're going to do to the image in Lightroom. Now, the original image has got soft focus. That's part of its attraction. So what we need to do in processing the image is to retain as much of the soft focus as we can, but still bring the elements that should be in crisp focus into crisp focus. So we're going to see how we can do that in Lightroom. To get started fixing this image, the first thing I'm going to do is to try and fix the white balance. It's looking a little bit blue to me, and I think that warming this up is really going to help it. So I'm going to select something here and just see what we get. Well, just by picking a piece of the bark on this silver birch, we've been able to get a nice warm look to the image. And I think that's a pretty good setting. I'm pretty happy with that now. Now let's look at the exposure because this is underexposed. So I'm just going to increase the exposure. It's probably going to take an easy stop of exposure here. I'll add a little bit of contrast. Because what I'm looking to do is to bring out this tree here and to send most of the rest of this image just slightly out of focus or keep that out of focus look. Now with highlights, I'm just going to bring those down. I'm going to bring down my shadows a little bit too, just to darken up the back of this image. And now let's look at setting a white point. The easiest way to set a white point is to shift double click on this white indicator here and Lightroom will automatically set your white point for you. Of course, you can also hold the Alt key and just drag to create the white point yourself. And then we'll do blacks. And again, we could shift double click on the black indicator or we can just go and drag down the blacks ourselves to find an ideal point. That looks pretty good to me. I want to just see the beginnings of some color in this image to indicate where the blacks are coming through. Now we'll add a little bit of clarity, which is mid-tone contrast adjustment. Don't want to add too much because I want to just use this tree and a few of these little branches here in focus. I want to leave the rest out of focus. So I don't want to bring out too much clarity because of its likely effect on the sharpening in the image because it does tend to give you a little bit more of a sharpening effect. I'm going to increase the vibrance though. This image was shot right in the middle of London. It's just right outside the Tate Gallery. Of course, it doesn't really look too much like that, but yes, it was shot right on the Thames there. So now that we've done this, let's have a look at the detail panel, which is the sharpening panel. I want to look at this for a couple of reasons. One, because I want to sharpen this image a little bit. Secondly, because I'm seeing some noise in it. When you look into the image, you can see that there's quite a fair bit of luminance noise here. So I'm going to increase the luminance noise adjustment here to try and get rid of some of that noise. Now, always with these noise adjustments, you want to err on the side of caution because removing noise, of course, softens the image. But, you know, that's not worrying me too much because we want that sort of out of focus look in the image. And I can bring back a little bit of sharpening in the tree in just a minute. So I've added quite a bit of luminance noise reduction here to this image. And now let's look at sharpening it. I'm going to wind up the sharpening to around 90. It's a pretty good setting. I'm going to drag on the radius slider, holding the Alt key or Option key as I do that. Now it's really hard to see probably in this video is exactly what you're seeing here, but what I'm looking for is some detail here and some detail here. Now the image is pretty soft. My camera shoots pretty soft at the best of times. So I'm going to have to increase the radius quite a bit to bring up even some halos in that area. And then the detail slider, again, Alt or Option, just to adjust the detail a bit. And a good rule of thumb with radius and detail is that if you go a bit higher on radius, then you want to come back a bit on detail. If you have a low radius, you probably want a slightly higher setting for detail. 
And now I'm going to Alt or Option drag on the masking slider because this is where we're able to apply quite a bit of masking to the image but remove it from the areas we don't want to see it in. And effectively, I don't want to see sharpening in any of the areas in the image apart from that tree down the right hand side and some of that detail in the top left corner. Well, 100 is the best I can do in masking, but I'm certainly going to go all the way up on this particular image. So I've applied quite a high level of sharpening to the image. Let's go back to this tree here because I think I can get a little bit more impact still in this tree. I'm going to do that with the adjustment brush. So I'm going to click to open up the adjustment brush and just set my brush specifications. Well, I'm going to choose Auto Mask and I'm just going to test my brush size. It could probably be just a little bit bigger than that. What I'm going to do is click to pin down my brush and now I'm just going to drag over the tree. Now with Auto Mask selected and because this tree has a fairly obvious edge, I'm probably not going to be selecting too much outside the area of the tree. Now you're probably having a fit as to what's going on here because the tree is just totally blown out. Well that's because of the settings here. So I'm just going to double click on this effect entry here and that just removes all the settings and just sets everything back to nothing at all. Let's see the selected mask overlay so we can see where our mask is. Well it's looking pretty good except it's a little bit outside the tree in a couple of places so I'm just going to go to the erase mask, make sure of its settings which are pretty good. I'm just going to run down the side of this tree to make sure that I remove the mask from those areas that I don't want it to be in. Okay, so let's turn the mask overlay off and now we've got this tree isolated so we can throw some things at it. One of the things I want to throw at it is some sharpness. I certainly want to sharpen it up and crisp it up a little bit so sharpness and clarity will both help that tree. Now applying it using the adjustment brush allows us to isolate it to adjust this tree so it's not affecting the rest of the image. So we can crank those settings up quite a little bit higher than we would if we were working on the entire image because we want to keep the rest of it soft. We just want this tree to be crisp and really, really visible. So I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit here. Just have a look and say how that looks. Well I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to click done. Now you could finish the image at this point. I'm really really happy with it but I'm going to go to the effects because I am going to add a slight highlight priority post crop vignette. Now that's too much obviously. Let's just dial it down just a little bit. There's a minus seven setting on this vignette just to darken the corners a little bit and draw your attention just a bit into the center of this image. So if we're calling this done, let's see how far we've come. I'm going to press the backslash key and that shows you the original image. Well, it's an interesting shot for having been captured in the middle of London on an autumn afternoon, but it's really not as powerful as it might be. So this is the after image. We've brought in these beautiful autumn fall colors. We've enhanced the tree so it's really the point of focus of the image. That and some detail up here in the top left corner of the image. And it's a far nicer image as a result. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.